السلام عليكم تكلمنا في المحاضرة السابقة عن موضوع الـ Complement System uh, What is the complement, what is the function of the complement and the pathway of complement uh, activation uh, تكلمنا عن uh, what is the activator of the classical complement system the alternative complement system and the pathway complement system وتكلمنا عن الـ product of the complement and their role in mediating an inflammatory response to recreate phagocytic cells and to kill the microorganism. وشفنا بأنه ال ال pathways دني تحدث في تكوين membrane attack complex والغاية من formation of the membrane attack complex. في هذه المحاضرة سأتكلم عن ال immunoglobulin structure and their function. So what is the teaching objective to discuss the general properties of all immunoglobulins, to describe the basic structure of immunoglobulins, to relate the immunoglobulin structure with their function, to define immunoglobulin hypervariable and the framework region. To define immunoglobulin classes, subclasses, types, and subtypes, to describe the structure and the properties of immunoglobulin classes. So, what is the immunoglobulin? Immunoglobulins are glycoproteins molecules which are produced by plasma cells in response to an immunogen and functions as antibodies. Usually plasma cells derived from uh, B cell. Limada summia immunoglobulin. In this figure, we will show the immunoglobulin derive their name from the finding that when antibody containing serum is a place in an electrical uh, field the antibodies which were responsible for immunity migrated to the globular proteins. هنا أنا ال الفجر اللي ده نشوفه هو عبارة عن migration of the immunoglobulin toward their site according to their molecular size. Now, what is the general functions of the immunoglobulin? الحقيقة هنا الموضوع يحتاج لشوية تاني. الوظيفة الرئيسية للإمينوغلوبين مو فقط بايندنج للأنتيجين، لكن مديت their effector functions by their binding. So, first, uh, immunoglobulin binds specifically to one or a few closely related antigens. Each immunoglobulin actually binds to specific antigenic determinant. Antigen binding by antibodies is the primary function of antibodies and can result in a protection of the host. It requires a valency. So, what is the valency? The valency of antibodies refers to a number of antigenic determinants that an individual antibodies molecules combined. The valency of all antibodies usually uh, at least two, and in some instances, maybe more. What is the effector function? Often, the binding of antibody to an antigen has no direct biological effect. Rather, the significant biological effects are a consequence of secondary effector functions of their antibodies. The immunoglobulins mediate a variety of these effector functions. Usually, the ability to carry out a particular effector function requires that the antibody bind to its antigen. Not every immunoglobulin will mediate all effector functions. So, the binding of antigen to their antibodies trigger the 
effector functions of the aminoglobulins. So what is the effector functions? It could be a membrane, a fixation of the complement system, and the result is lysis of the cells and release of the biologic active molecules, as we seen in the uh, previous lecture. Second, the effector uh, function is binding of various cell types, antigen, antibody, complex will bind phagocytic, will stimulate phagocytic cells, lymphocytes, platelet, mast cells, and basophils. These are these cells have a receptor that bind to immunoglobulins and the binding of immunoglobulins can activate the cells to perform their function. Some immunoglobulins also bind to a receptor of a placental cells. This binding results in a transfer of immunoglobulin across the placenta and transferred maternal antibodies provide immunity to the fetus and newborn. Which type of immunoglobulin class will it, uh, transfer across the placenta and why? Now, what is the basic structure of the immunoglobulins? As we see in this figure, the basic structure of all immunoglobulins uh, are described in this figure. Although different immunoglobulins can differ structurally, they are all built from the same basic units. First, the heavy and light chains. This is the heavy chain and this is the light chain. All immunoglobulins have a four chain structure as their basic unit. They are composed of two identical light chains and two identical heavy chains. What is the disulfide bond? Two types of disulfide uh, bonds present in their structure. First, the inter chain disulfide bond. This is the inter chain disulfide bond. And intra chain disulfide bond. The heavy and light chains. And the two heavy chains are held together by interchain disulfide bonds and by non covalent interaction. The number of interactions, interchain disulfide uh, interaction, varies among different immunoglobulin molecules. The interchain within each of the polypeptide chain, there are also intra chain disulfide bonds. Within the immunoglobulin molecule, there will be a variable and constant region. The C represent a constant region and the V will represent the variable region. We will see in this structure there will be a three constant regions and only one variable regions. After the amino acid sequence of many different heavy and light chain were compared, it became clear that both the heavy and light chain would be divided into two regions based on the variability of the amino acid sequences. The light chains and heavy chains. Another stru structure within the molecule is the hinge region, the region at which the arm of the antibody molecules form a Y structure is called the hinge region.
and this provides some flexibility of the molecule at this point. Let's bring to the joint like structure. Another uh, structure is the domain. This is the domain. This is the domain. This is the domain, and this is the domain. The 3D image of the immunoglobin molecules shows that it is not as straight as depicted in this picture. There are, rather, it is a folded into a globular region, each of which contain an intra-chain disulfide bond. This link will result in formation of doming. Also, uh, it will be shown that there will be a light chain domain and heavy chain domains. Also, uh, the immunoglobulin structure may contain a carbohydrate molecules. Carbohydrates are attached to the constant heavy two domain in most cases. This is the constant heavy one, and this is the constant heavy two, and this is the region of constant heavy three. Now, what is the variable region? عرفنا الإيمينوغلوبين كون من a constant region and the variable region. The structure of the variable region contain an area we called the hypervariable region or complementary determined region. Comparison of the amino acid sequence of the variable regions of the immunoglobulins show that most of the variability reside in three regions. These called the hypervariable regions or the complementary determining regions. And it will be represented in another figure. Antibodies with different specificities have different complementary determining regions, while antibodies of the exact same specificity have identical, identical complementary determining region. The complementary determined region are found in both the heavy and light chain. So, these are two heavy chains, and these are the two light chains. This area is the variable light chain, which is only one. This is the variable light chain. And this is the variable heavy chain. This is the constant light chain. And these are the constant heavy chains. So there will be a three heavy chain and one light chain. These are the hinge region, which provide a flexibility for binding of the immunoglobulin to their antigen. The link between immunoglobulins, heavy chain, and light chain by disulfide bond. This is the inter chain of disulfide bond, which give the domain structure of the heavy chain. This is the one, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one, this is, this is, and this is, this is the one. Another uh, structure is the interchain, intrachain 
disulfide bond. So there will be an intra-chain and inter-chain disulfide bond. Another molecule attached to the uh, constant heavy uh, chain 2 is the carbohydrate molecules. So, antibodies with different specificities have a different complementary determining region. Antibody of the exact same specificity have identical complementary determining region. These regions are found in both the heavy and light chains. The regions between the complementary determining regions in the variable region are called the framework region. Based on similarities and differences in this framework regions, the immunoglobulin heavy and light chain variable regions can be divided into groups and subgroups. These represent the product of different variable region genes. So this is under genetic control of the immunoglobulin genes. Immunoglobulin fragment structure function relationship. Immunoglobulin fragment produced by proteolytic digestion have been very useful in elucidating structure function relationship on immunoglobulin. First, FAB fragment. Digestion with papain break the immunoglobulin molecule in the hinge region before the heavy heavy interchain disulfide bond this result in the formation of two identical fragments that contain the light chain and the variable heavy and constant heavy one chain of the heavy chain first antibody antigen binding these fragments were called the F A B fragment, yani fraction antibody. Because they contain the antigen binding site of the antibody. Each fab fragment is monovalent, whereas the original molecule was divalent. The combining site of the antibody is created by both the variable heavy and variable light region. An antibody is able to bind a particular antigenic determinant because it has a particular combination of variable heavy and light. Different combination of variable heavy and variable light result in antibodies that combine to different antigenic determinant. Another region is the FC region. Digestion with papain also produce a fragment that contains the remainder of the two heavy chains, each containing the constant heavy uh, two and constant heavy two, uh, three domains. This fragment was called the FC fragment because it is easy uh, crystallized. What's the effector function? The effector function of the immunoglobulin are mediated by this part of the molecules. Different functions are mediated by different domains in this fragment. Normally, the ability of antibody to carry out an effector functions require prior binding of antigen. However, there are exceptions to this rules. TF FAB fragment 2 is the result of treatment of immunoglobulin with pepsin 
digestion. The result is the cleavage of the heavy chain after the uh, inter-heavy chain disulfide bonds, resulting in a fragment that contains both the anti-gene uh, binding site, and this fragment is called the F antibody 2 because it is divalent. The FC region of the molecule is digested into a small peptide by pepsin, the FAB2 bind antigen, but it does not mediate the effector functions of these antibodies. So this is the uh, difference between the digestion with papain and digestion with the pepsin. So uh, uh, these figures, so the effect of functions where different functions are mediated by different domains in this fragment. So this fragment shows the antigen binding site, the hinge region of the receptor, the site of placental uh, transfer and the complement binding site. Another figure on the right side shows the pepsin digestion and their uh, products. Human immunoglobulin classes, subclasses, types, and subtypes. The immunoglobulin can be subdivided into five different classes based on the differences in the amino acid sequences in the constant region of the heavy chain. فقط الكلاسيفيكيشن يعتمد على كونستانت ريجن اول اميونوجلوبين within a given classes will have very similar heavy chain constant region these differences can be detected by the sequence studies or more commonly by serological means i mean by the use of antibodies directed to these differences it uh, can be classified into the most common one is the immunoglobulin G, second immunoglobulin M, third immunoglobulin D, fourth immunoglobulin E, fifth immunoglobulin heavy epsilon heavy chain. Subclasses. The classes of immunoglobulin can be subdivided into subclasses based on small differences in the amino acid sequence in the constant region of heavy chain. Yar haykun fakat differences in small amount of acid sequence amino acid sequences. All immunoglobulin within subclass will have very similar heavy chain constant region amino acid sequences. Again, these differences are most commonly de uh, detected by serological study. Immunoglobulin G subclasses include uh, four uh, types, immunoglobulin G1, G2, G3, and G4. Immunoglobulin A subclasses include IgA1 uh, and IgG, IgA2. Now, what is the types of the immunoglobulin? Immunoglobulins can be classified by the type of the light chain that they have. Light chain types are based on the differences in the amino acid sequences in the constant region of the light chain. These differences are detected also by serological means. May include a Kaba light chain or lambda light chains. Immunoglobulin subtypes, the light chain can be also divided into subtypes based on the differences in the amino acid sequences in the constant region of the light chain. And uh, these may include lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4. Now we will talk about immunoglobulin heterogeneity. 
immunoglobulins considered as a population of a molecule are normally very heterogeneous because they are composed of different classes and subclasses, each of which has different types and subtypes of the light chain. In addition, different immunoglobulin molecules can have different antigen binding properties because of the different variable heavy and variable light chains. لذلك احنا دائما uh, our body is exposed to different types of infection bacterial infection, viral infection, parasitic infection, even allergic type of re reaction, different types of the uh, reaction. جسمنا يصير به اكسبوجر الى different types of antigen. لذلك راح يصير عندنا different types of antibodies. وهذا ال different types of antibodies ممكن يكون different classes. لانه ال primary antibody ما راح يكون هو الاساس بعد ما يصير اكسبوجر للانتيجين مره ثانيه. فمثلا عندنا بال primary antibody ال antibody response هو usually IgM antibody. This is the primary immune response. After second attack, there will be a class switching from the IgM immunoglobulin class into IgG immunoglobulin class. Within the class, there will be also variability in subclasses. Also, there will be a more variability within the types and subtypes to defend against different types of infection. Now we will talk about the structure and some properties of the immunoglobulin classes and subclasses. The most common one is the immunoglobulin G. The structure of the immunoglobulin G subclasses are represented in these figures. All immunoglobulins are monomers, 7S immunoglobulin. The subclasses differ in the number of disulfide bond in the light in the length of often in the length of the hinge region. It is the most versatile immunoglobulin because it is capable of carrying out all of the functions of the immunoglobulin molecules. Immunoglobulin G is the major immunoglobulin in the serum. It represents about 75% of the serum. Immunoglobulin G is the major immunoglobulin in the extravascular spaces. It is the only immunoglobulin that will pass through the placenta and this give protection to the neonate against different types of infection that are exposed to their mothers. Only exceptions of the immunoglobulin that is not present is the that uh, not present in the neonet is the immunoglobulin G2. It fixes the complement. It binds to cells like macrophage, monocyte, neutrophils, and some lymphocytes have FC receptor for the FC region of the immunoglobulin G. Not all subclasses binds equally. Some classes have different uh, uh, binding affinities to different antigens. It is a good opsonin. The second type of immunoglobulin is the immunoglobulin M. It has a pentameric structure. The structure of the IgM is presented in this figure, shown on the left side. IgM normally exists as a pentamer, 19S immunoglobulin, but it can also exist as a monomer. In the pentameric form, all heavy chain are identical and all light chain are identical. Thus, 
the valence is theoretically 10. Now, I the valency at least two for each immunoglobulin. ممكن نعتبر هاي الإمينوغلوبلينز واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة في اثنين فنعتبر الفالنس مالته تن IGM has an extra domain in the mu chain constant heavy four and it has another protein covalently bind via a disulfide bond called the J chain junctional chain that it will link all the structure together by polymerization. What's the properties? IgM is the third most common serum immunoglobulin. IgM is the first immunoglobulin to be made by the fetus and the first immunoglobulin to be made by a virgin B cells when it is stimulated by antigen so it is the first line immunoglobulin that fight against primary entrance of the antigen mm -hmm. it is a consequence of it is pentameric structure igm is a good complement fixing immunoglobulin thus igm antibodies are very efficient in leading to the lysis of the microorganism very good Opsonin. As a consequence of its structure, IgM is also a good agglutinating immunoglobulin. IgM binds to some cells via FC receptors. B cell surface immunoglobulin exists as a monomer and lack the J chain but it has an extra 20 amino acids in the C-terminal end of which encore into the membrane. This is binding immunoglobin. It is a monomeric structure. The third class of the immunoglobin is the immunoglobin A. The structure of the serum immunoglobin A is a monomer. But immunoglobulin A that found in the secretion is the dimeric structure, which is present in the uh, figure shown. When IgA exists as a dimer, a J chain is associated with it. So the junctional chain of the pentameric structure that would join the immunoglobulin and together now there is another J chain within the uh, secretory IgA immunoglobulin molecules. When IgA is found in, in secretions, it is also has another protein associated with it. It's called the secretory piece or the T piece. Secretory IgA molecule is sometimes referred to as 11S immunoglobulin. Unlike the remainder of the IgA, which is made in the uh, plasma cells, the secretory cell, uh, piece is made in the epithelial cells, usually the epithelium of the respiratory system or the epithelium of the gastrointestinal system. And it is added to the IgA as it passes into the secretion. This figure show how the secretory piece added to the immunoglobulin A. The secretory piece help immunoglobulin A to be transported across the mucosa and also protect it from degradation by the secretions, like gastrointestinal secretion or some enzyme present in the respiratory secretion. What's the properties? Immunoglobulin A is the second most common serum immunoglobulin usually become after the IgG antibody. Immunoglobulin A is the major class of immunoglobulin in the secretion like tears, saliva, colostrum, mucus. Since it is found in secretion, secretory IgA is an important in local immunity. 
Normally, IgA does not fix complement unless it is aggregated. Immunoglobulin A can bind to some cells like neutrophils and some lymphocytes. The fourth immunoglobulin is the immunoglobulin D, or we call the surface immunoglobulin because it is attached to the surface of B lymphocyte. The structure of immunoglobulin D is presented in the figure shown. IgD exists only as a monomer. IgD is found in low level in serum. Its role in serum is uncertain. It is the primary found on the B cell surface where it is function as a receptor for an antigen, for antigen recognition. IgD on the surface of B cells has an extra amino acid in the C terminal end for encoding to the membrane. It is also associated with the immunoglobin alpha and beta chain. ال C terminal elongation شفناها وين هماتين ب ال IgM antibody which is the surface immunoglobulin. IgD usually does not fix complement. The last type of immunoglobulin is the IgE immunoglobulin, and this is a very important immunoglobulin that is present in the serum. It is location on mast cells uh, is very vital in mediate certain type of reaction. This is the most important immunoglobulin that mediate uh, an allergic reaction or anaphylactic reaction. Uh, immunoglobulin E structure is presented in figure shown. It does exist as a monomer and has an extra domain in the constant region constant epsilon 4 constant we call it the constant epsilon 4 immunoglobulin E is the least common serum immunoglobulin since it binds very tightly to the FC receptor on the basophil and mast cells even before interacting with the antigen it is usually present on these cells. It is involved in an allergic reaction as a consequence of it is binding to the basophils and mast cell immunoglobulin E is involved in allergic reaction. Binding of allergen to the IgE on the cell surface result in the release of various pharmacological mediator that result in allergic uh, symptoms. راح نشوف شلون يصير بايندينج اوف بولين اور الارجينيك سبستانس تو ذا امينوجلوبولين اي اند هاو ات ميديت ذا ريليز اور ديجرانليشن اوف ذيس تايبس اوف سيل باي كروس لينكينج اوف تو امينوجلوبولين موليكيول اون ذا سيرفيس اوف ذيس سيلز Immunoglobulin E also play a role in parasitic helminthes disease. Since serum IgE level rise in parasitic disease, measuring IgE level is useful in diagnosing some parasitic disease. Eosinophils have an FC receptor for the IgE and binding of eosinophils to the IgE coated helminths result in killing of these types of parasite. Usually, IgE does not fix complement. So, the only complement fixator is the IgG and IgM antibodies, the Karuha collision. Now, we'll talk about different diseases associated with the immunoglobulins. First, IgG, it increases in chronic granulomatous infection. Infection of all types, hyperimmunization, liver disease, malnutrition, dysproteinemia, this is associated with hypersensitivity, granuloma, dermatologic disorders, 
IgG, myeloma and rheumatoid arthritis. A decrease in A gamma globulinemia, lymphoid aplasia, selective IgG or IgA deficiency, IgA myeloma, Benz Jones proteinemia associated with multiple myeloma, and the chronic lymphoblastic leukemia. For IgM antibodies, it increase usually in adult, in Welderstrom macroglobulinemia, trypanosomiasis, actinomycosis, carrion disease, malaria, infectious mononucleosis, lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, and this gamma globulinemia. Small notes about this IgM ant uh, antibody in the newborn. A level of IgM above 2 nanogram per deciliter is an indication of an in neutral stimulation by infection. And this infection stimulates the immune system and stimulation by Robella virus infection, cytomegalovirus infection, syphilis, or toxoplasmosis. These we call the torch infection. راح نشوفها في المحاضرات القادمة إن شاء الله في الفيرولوجي جانيكولوجي راح تاخذوها أكو مصطلح يسموه persistence IgM antibodies دائما احنا نقول أكو class switching between IgM and IgG the primary infection is associated to the IgM antibody the secondary infection is associated to the development of IgG antibody and it requires sometimes for this conversion. Latin, when we show the IgM antibody persistent in the unit for a few months, six months, even to 18 months, there will be an, some etiological agent for this elevation, usually associated with persistent infection. What about IgA antibody? It increases in Westcott Aldrich syndrome, cirrhosis of the liver, certain stage of collagen and other autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis and systemic lupus erythematosus, chronic infection not based on immunological deficiency, IgA myeloma. A decrease in hereditary ataxia telangiectasia, immunological deficiency state like this gamma globulinemia, congenital and acquired A gamma globulinemia and hypo gamma globulinemia, malabsorption syndrome, lymphodiaplasia, IgA, G myeloma, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, chronic lymphoblastic leukemia. What about immunoglobulin D? It increases in chronic infection and in IgD myeloma. What about immunoglobulin E? Increase in atopic skin disease such as eczema, dermatitis, hay fever, asthma, anaphylactic shock, and IgE myeloma. It decreases in congenital A gamma globulinemia, hypogamma globulinemia due to faulty malabsorption or synthesis of immunoglobulins. Thank you for listening.